Groucho, we have Edna de Spain, and uh, her partner uh, is Napoleon Tutte La La. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> Why don't we start over, huh? Uh, Groucho, we have Edna de Spain and Napoleon Tut. Uh, well, I can't do it. It's T U I T E L E L E A P G A. And I think you're going to find him quite interesting. They want to talk to you. So, first, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome to your bachelor life. Say the secret word and you will split $100. Edna de Spain and Napoleon Titelaka Piga Paga Puga Paga Piga. <laughs> how did I do, uh, uh, Napoleon? Your name is Napoleon? Yes, sir. Uh, how did I do with that? Uh, let me try it again. Huh? Tutelaka Puka Liga Paga Paga Puga. You were swearing. <laughs> no, I was sweating. I wasn't swearing. <laughs> okay, wise guy, you pronounce it. Tui uh, Tele Le Panga. That's all there is to it? Yes. <laughs> Why did it take me so long to say it? Huh? Where does uh, a name like that come from? Uh? Samoa. From where? Samoa. No, thanks. I've had quite enough. Uh. <laughs> what, is, what does your name mean in English? It means uh, a big king. Are you, are you a big king? No, I am not. But are I you am a little a... king, like Saglos? I am, I am not of any king, but I am a chief recognized in the islands. What's it like in Samoa? Is it anything like the travel posters at the American Express? Oh, much, much better than that, Mr. Really? Groucho. Well, in tell Samoa, us something about it. Well, that. in Samoa, everybody's happy. There's no poverty, no hunger, no body worries. Uh, no sickness? Beautiful women. No taxes to pay, and the climate will make anybody young. Uh -huh. Well, don't look at me. Huh? <laughs> well, let me ask you something. Would you ever consider living any place besides Samoa? I'm living now in Oceanside, California. <laughs> now, why do you rave about uh, Samoa so much when you're living in Oceanside? Well, I came here, Mr. Groucher, to further my education and to educate my children. Are you still a chief, uh, even though you happen to be living in Oceanside? I am... Uh, what are you, the fire chief now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am uh, legally uh, an, an official chief, but I'm not using my chief's title here because it's no use. You mean nobody believes it? Well, everybody believes because I have uh, my credentials with me, but uh, what's the use of being a chief since everybody is just the same as Tom, Dick, and Harry? <laughs> it's not a title here, but it's the money and what you and who you know over here in America. You become rather cynical. But well, what does it mean to be a chief in Samoa? Do you hand out the paving contracts and stuff the ballot boxes and uh, things like that? Oh, no. no? Uh, to be a chief in Samoa, you have to face a lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. you well, have don't you think paving contracts is a responsible job? No, we do not have such things uh, as you have here. You don't? You have to see that all the members of your family are happy. You have to take care of the land, see that they are not exploited or not taken away by the mongers. Uh, you must know the history of, and the genealogy of, of the family. You must know the boundaries of, the, uh, of all the family land. Mm -hmm. You should know how to defend the prestige of your family. Well, Napoleon, uh, you'd be a chief anywhere. It's quite obvious that you're a man among men. And there's only one thing better than that, and that's to be a man among women. <laughs> I'll get back to you in a minute, Nap. You're Edna de Spain? Yeah, I was in a left home. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I ought to quit now while I'm ahead, I think. You can try. Where are you from, Edna? Uh, Wisconsin originally. I was born in Whitehall, Wisconsin, over a telephone office. You were born over a telephone office. You must have had some very good connections. And... <laughs> were you ever in the hands of the receiver while you were up there? Just one. Are you married, Edna? Yeah. That's your married name, Edna? No, De Spain is the married De name. De Spain, oh. Yeah, Edna is, 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 is your husband a, a Spanish? No, he's a Frenchman. He's a Frenchman? Uh-huh, he's a... Well, how did he get a name like De Spain if he's a Frenchman? Well, he was born with it, I guess. It's... <laughs> I, I guess many people are, uh, you know. The general rule. Yeah. I'm afraid to ask her anything. 
Uh, you say he, he has no Spanish blood in him at all? No, uh-uh. No, uh, does he have any blood in him? A lot. <laughs> well, that answers many questions. <laughs> Is he a very romantic Frenchman? Well, uh, like most Frenchmen, he says he's a pretty romantic Frenchman, he says. <laughs> do, I, do I detect a note of cynicism there? Uh? Oh, no. Uh -uh. Well, uh, no. well uh, I'd like to continue this, but it, it gets on dangerous ground if we <laughs> pursue this any further. But I hope both of you win a lot of money. And George, would you please bring us the question box? Now, one of you, uh, you, what was the category they had chosen? Uh, facts about presidents, right? Facts about presidents. Mm -hmm. This is the 100, 200, 300. You have to accumulate five in order to get a chance at the big money later. $300 to start with. For $300, two former presidents died on July 4th, 1826. One was Thomas Jefferson. Who was the other one? They both died on the same day. One was Thomas Jefferson, who was the other one? John Adams. John, John Adams is right. $300. Oh, hey. <laughs> All right. You have $300, you have three more questions to make $500, so... <laughs> That's on me. <laughs> this one is for $200. What president had a famous home named the Hermitage? Talk it over with your partner now. Famous home named the Hermitage. What president? Jefferson. No. Here's the answer. Read it out. Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson. Well, you still have $300. Two, two more questions. chances to make five. So, you want to pick one? Oh, no. You pick one. Thank you. Another $300 question. Uh, for what president is the capital of a foreign country named? One of our presidents, the capital of a foreign country was named after him. Come on, kids. If you don't know, guess. Roosevelt. What is it? Roosevelt. No, it's Marilyn Monroe. No, no, James Monroe. James Monroe. What country? Uh, uh, Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. Well, we uh, <clears throat> have one more chance to make five hundred. You have three. Uh, one more question to make five. Two hundred dollars. Impeachment charges were filed against only one of our presidents. Who was he? Talk it over. Talk it over. One of you may spark the other. One of our presidents had impeachment charges filed against him. Who was he? Come on. Got to answer now, kids. If you don't know, guess. Beautiful. Harrison. Harrison. Here it is. Andrew Johnson. Andrew Johnson. I'm sorry, you didn't. So you won what? Three hundred dollars, huh? Well, you list your Libby, you're leaving here with something. It's not too bad. Thanks for being with us. Sorry you didn't win more. <laughs> All right, George. What delightful surprise do you have up your sleeve for me now? Well, uh, Brenda Bros is waiting to talk to you. And her partner is a special guest, the well-known nightclub comedian, Mr. Doodles Weaver. Well. He talks to me, Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bachelor. <laughs> Welcome to your bachelor. Say the secret word and take home an extra hundred dollars. Noodles, I'm glad to see you. Uh, <coughs> doodles. Oh, Doodles. I <laughs> thought it was Noodles Weaver. <laughs> Your name is Brenda Bros? That's right. No, that's a lovely name, Brenda. Thank you. Brenda Bros. I like it. It has a bounce to it. How long have you been bouncing, Brenda Bros? Uh, what I mean is, how, how old are you? Well, I'm 18, but I've been bouncing Brenda Bros for three days now. Oh. You mean you're a new bride? Is that's that what right. you're implying? 
Congratulations, Brenda. Thank you. What was your name before it became Brose? Broadnax. Broadax? Did <laughs> you give me that again? Brenda Broadnax. Brenda. Well, I don't blame you for getting married. Right? <laughs> I must say, you didn't do much better. How'd you meet this gorilla? I mean, this chap. Oh, uh, we uh, went to the show, and then we went to have went to a pizza. show? Yes. A TV show? No, it was a movie. A movie? Uh -huh. Are there people still going to the movies? I think so. Really? We what, did. what was the picture? I don't even remember. Well, did you watch it? Yes, I did. Right. Were you sitting in the balcony or downstairs? We were sitting in the balcony and uh -huh. we laughed so much I don't remember the show. You always laugh when you're in the balcony? Or? No, I laughed at him. He was real funny. Oh. Have you given much thought to matrimony? I mean, it's a very serious step, you know. For example, have you decided who's going to be the boss now that you're out of the balcony? Don's going to be the boss. I think the man should always wear the pants in the house. Well, if he doesn't want to catch an ammonia. <laughs> Incidentally, it might be a good idea if we wore them outside of the house, too. Well, that's a very common attitude. In most homes, the man does wear the pants, you know. But you don't see his pants because they're <laughs> under his apron. <laughs> While he's throwing out the frozen dinner. <laughs> While she's playing bingo with three other dames. You know, your husband is a very lucky fellow, then. Well, thank you. Get a bright, charming, and attractive girl like you. Uh, Doodles, how old are you? Uh, well, um, I'm 43. Are you? Uh, would you say you're a grown man, an adult, ready to face the serious responsibilities of life? Uh, I would say that and reiterate it. Well, why do you use such a ridiculous name as Doodles? Why don't you use your real name? Well, uh, my real name indeed. is... That's almost as silly as Groucho. <laughs> my real name is Winstead Sheffield Glendening Dixon Weaver. Well, I think Doodles is a wonderful name. For <laughs> don't you ever change it. Where are you playing now, Doodles? Well, uh, I'm uh, looking for a job. Not mine, I hope, huh? <laughs> what happened to the, that happens to the best of us in business, you know. It certainly happened to me. How long have you been out of work? Well, I haven't had a steady job for three years. Doodles, I'd say you have a problem, and I'm willing to help you solve it. Now, let me think about it while I talk some more to Miss uh, Brenda Broadax. Here. Fine, Groucho. Bruce. <laughs> where, are you, where are you from, Brenda? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, you look like a Texas beauty queen. Have you ever entered any beauty contest down there in the Lone Star State? Well, um, I was Miss Teenage America, and Miss Teenage Texas, Miss Oak Cliff, and Miss Firecracker of 1958. Oh, you were Miss Firecracker That's of 58? Right. Yes. We get along great. I was Mr. Punk of 1929. <laughs> That was the year I got lit. <laughs> Are you working, Brenda, or have you suddenly retired starting last Sunday? Well, until last Sunday, I was a model, photographic modeling and uh -huh. calendar work. Calendars? You photograph calendars? Yes, sir. You mean like September morn, those kind of things, huh? Um, mm, well, calendars for banks. You are the... <laughs> What kind of banks? Do you mean the, the Newfoundland banks? Or the... Oh. Isn't that pretty racy stuff, posing for calendars? Not for banks. Everybody goes into a bank. It has to be a nice calendar. Oh. Well, I think the banks would like some daring poses because they draw the most interest in them. <laughs> <laughs> now, Doodles, back to you. Do you approve of marriage? Oh, very much. I've been married four times. <laughs> One of Hollywood's most successful non-supporting actors. Oh, I see. <laughs> Are you, are you married at the moment? Uh, I'm very happily married. I'm married well, I'm to a lovely to little uh, actress, Rita Green, and we've been married three years. We have a lovely little child. My mother loves children. She's a given anything that I've been one. And, uh, <laughs> she's a good actress. She's a good cook. Did you ever taste fried water? <laughs> <laughs> she's the only person I ever met that can burn potato salad. <laughs> no fooling. Her cooking is so bad that our garbage disposal has ulcers. <laughs> is that really true? <laughs> no, she, she dresses fit to kill and cooks the same way. <laughs> do 
Is, that's very funny, Doodles. Is that part of your nightclub act? Yeah, that's that part, part of, of your act. That's, that's very part funny. of. Uh, I don't know why you don't work more. That's very funny. Your audience screams at you stuff. Could you give us another short routine? Maybe well, we'll get a job as a star of a big movie. Yeah, you know, I like to keep current on affairs, so I uh, live in Burbank. You know, Luther Burbank was a famous man. He was the greatest naturalist. He crossed animals and he crossed things. You know, he crossed a hybrid, they call him. He crossed a potato with a sponge, and he got something that tastes awful, but it holds a lot of gravy. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd try this myself, and I got a laboratory. You know, what? A laboratory. You know, where you make things and creatures down in my attic. I keep the attic in the cellar. <laughs> I've been crossing animals, and I crossed a rooster with a racing farm. I got a chicken that lays odds. <laughs> and then, and then I, 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 crossed an, I crossed an abalone and a crocodile. I got an abacadile and a crocobalone. <laughs> and then, I thought I'd experiment even further. I'd go uh, even more. So you I realize you're walking away was, with a show here. <laughs> Well, then I crossed a gorilla with a mink, and I got a wonderful fur coat, but the sleeves are so long. <laughs> and then, finally, I crossed a bee with a doorbell. You know what I got? What did you get? A humdinger. <laughs> Didn't you used to do a race routine? Oh, the, uh, the, that number, they found out I said more words in the space of a few minutes than any other human being. Do it. Human being! <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's sort of a television idea of one of the He's big... He's going in business for himself over there. <laughs> <clears throat> you bet your life with Doodles Weaver. <laughs> Ladies Don't make it sound so sincere. <laughs> There's a Doodles Weaver in the press box at Indianapolis for the big races out here for Memorial Day. The cars are ready to go. The sun is out. They're coming down the first turn. There's 33 cars bunched together. The green flag is waving. The star says OK. And, and there they go! Around the first turn is a green car, a blue car, a black car. The first car by the stands is number 14. Here he comes, Sam Hanks, driving by. Here he comes by now. <laughs> there he goes now. <laughs> car number nine, three, four. A wreck. A man is skidding around. He's out of control. Up to the fence. Down on the fence. I think he's out of control. All his wheels are gone. <laughs> He's hit the fence, but he's okay. My assistant is on the track, Sam, with a traveling microphone. Take it downstairs, Sam and Elmer. It's all yours, okay? Thank you. I'm on the track now, and Elmer's right here. Let's go, Elmer. Follow me. As I cross the track, <laughs> three went by. <laughs> Number three went by there. Stand back, Elmer. <laughs> there, goes, there goes four. Watch out, Elmer. <laughs> there goes nine. <laughs> Careful, Elmer. <laughs> there goes 11. <laughs> there goes Elmer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back at the sand for the finish of the races. The best man on here today is number 14, really moving. Here he comes on the straightaway. There he goes. That's the Lloyd Green special into the back stretch on the far away. There he goes again. Look at the go. There he goes again. There he goes again. He went by twice. <laughs> Ready here, they come right here's another car, another car, and uh, a little midget racer. There goes the midget racer. Another car, and there goes the winner! Pete Obama. Well, I'm sure the audience agrees with me. I don't understand why you're not working steadily. You're a much better comedian than many that I see making big salaries. And I'll thank you to stop by and my job. Well, let's see if you can make some money. I know that uh, Doodles would like to pick up a few bucks here tonight, and we hope you do. Uh, George, bring out the question box. Now, I presume you both know how to play this game. What category did they select? Uh, you select the dictionary quiz, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Brenda, you pick your first question. You know, the idea is to win $500, and then you go for the big money. Oh, I'm just... Uh... You're starting with $200, right? $200, right. Reckless. $200. What is the lexicon? L-E-X-I-C-O-N. A lexicon is a, it's a dictionary Don't go word. any further. Don't go any further. You now have $200. $200. And three more chances to make five. And a three. What is an auditorium? A natatorium? Natatorium. A time. It's a place where people learn to swim. A swimming pool. We have to give you that. Yes, they, have. they already have five hundred dollars, so uh, this is gravy. Climbing now. there. 
For three hundred dollars, what is the sybarite? A sybarite? S y b a r i t e. A sybarite is an ancient uh, Grecian uh, personality, sort of half half uh, god, half man, half beast. No, I'm I'm sorry. It's a, a luxury lover. Oh well, I didn't have sybarite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you had Sybil Vane. Uh, one more chance, although you already have 500, so you're going to be back for a chance at 10,000. Isn't she lovely, Joe? Yes, she certainly is. Would you like to be in the balcony with her at some <laughs> empty movie theater? Congratulations on your marriage. Okay. <laughs> what is a hell of? H E L O T. Wait, what? Yeah, you say. But I don't know. Slave? That's right, it's sure. That's right. Okay, slave as well. Yeah. So you wind up with eight hundred dollars and we'll see that. you in a little How while. How do you know that? How do you know that? I think I studied it. Were you a slave? And, and Ever a slave? No. Well, you it comes happy. from the original religious slavery back in about uh -huh. uh, well that's why we won't yeah, go into the tail. Uh -huh. It also means a safe, like down yeah. on the beach. <laughs> Sir, that's it. Well, congratulations and uh, we we'll, we'll see you later. Thank Particularly you, you huh? Doodles? See you later. George, here's the big question. Who's going to try for the big money? Brenda Bros and uh, Doodles Weaver earned $800, so here they are again for a chance of $10,000, $5,000, or two. Well, here you are. I hope you... Oh, I've seen you before. Now, yeah. uh, pick a number for a total of $10,000. Um, pick a good one. Four. <laughs> pick a number for 5000 Seven and the lucky seven. Five and two, you're through. Six and one, you're done. <laughs> If any other number comes up, uh, but these, the question is where the total of 2,000, assuming that you win it. Okay, one of you spin the wheel. Go ahead, my dear. Your numbers were seven and four and landed on two, so here we go for a total of two grand. One of the biggest news stories of the 20th century was the abdication of a British king so we could marry an American woman. For a total of 2,000, tell me what her name was at the time of the abdication. What's the answer? Prince of Wales and Margaret, no. Can you want to know what? the question? The question? No, no, you can't repeat it. Um, well, uh, tell me the name, um, her name, uh, at the Mary, time of the abdication. Mary, Mary. Here, you read it yourself, out loud. Wallace Simpson. You believe it? <laughs> so you won a total of what, uh, $800? I well, I think you're pretty lucky to get away with $800 because we're tough up here. Congratulations, and I hope you get a lot of jobs, Doodles. Thank Doodles, you, and I'm, I'm sure you will. Thank you very much. Good night.